Okay, good morning everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the PDS panel. As uh, some of you probably know, PDS is the penetration testing ex execution standard. I would like to introduce our panelists today. Mr. Chris Nickerson, manning the board. <laughs> Mr. Dave Kennedy. Thank you. Mr. Dave Kennedy, who, who, yeah, who just got off the plane and came straight here. Have a shower. He had a shower, so <laughs> come on and say hi afterwards. He just tastes his first mate. And uh, Mr. Ian Amit, which you probably know from yesterday. Which you know from yesterday. That's it. That's my intro. That's all you need. You remember Ian from yesterday. Yeah. He's a guy who exfiltrates the stuff out of your network. You probably know that. And myself, uh, my name is Stefan Freely. Uh, I'm a uh, Pen tester in Switzerland. I'm yeah, not going to talk about myself. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, you want to explain how, what it's all about? You want to do it? Chris, do this. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on the board. board. <laughs> There's nothing on the board right now. So, okay, you go. All right. So, play glasses. Hi. Yeah. Like everything. Like everything else. <laughs> Uh, that that we do this whole thing started from a drunken rant about a, a year ago, a year and a couple okay. of months ago. Um, and we're all bitching and whining about. Would you stop interfering? With we're all bitching and whining. We're all bitching and whining about how we we thought we knew what we were doing and no one else was kind of following suit and uh, and all the bad pen tests that we've seen and, and kind of the industry got getting to a layer level of just bullshit and how everyone perceived pen testing as simply you know popping shells and, and <laughs> basically this whole thing. Oh oh we have no sound. <laughs> if you don't do it yourself it won't work. Oh, wait, wait you got it, you got it, you got it, don't move, don't touch it. Wait, shh, shh. This is because there's people that are raping the industry. <laughs> and that's where those people. Here it is. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, things like just do automatic stuff. Um, um, I like, um, I don't mess with it. Oh, you got your own. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little it's heads up. Through. Just a little heads up. You know, we publish all the talks on our YouTube channel, Devcon Switzerland, <laughs> which will be available for everyone in the audience being 18 plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some point after the conference. Yes, <laughs> Just say, okay, you want to say something interesting, so go ahead. No, no, it's basically, this is how we feel the term pen testing has been uh, treated in the past I don't know, five, ten years. And, and we just thought we would uh, you know, try to save it or, or try to define using a common language and some, some standards of quality what we think pen testing should be, um, which is not click, scan, generate report, replace the Nessus you know, header with like mypentestingcompany.com <laughs> and just shoot out a PDF report. Wait, so so I have a question, and I know it's early because well, it's early for me because I just woke up. So, what's a pen test? I am ready to write, so you can't be silent. How many people here are pen testers? You can raise your hand. Okay. How many have you have purchased a pen test before? Raise your hands like Okay, that's a couple more. Alright, how many of you know what the word pen test means? 
Yeah, cool. We have. How many of you do speak English and have any idea what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, same number. Okay, <laughs> cool. Great. So, so tell me what is a pen test? Like, just throw stuff out. What's a pen test? Deep penetration. DP. Right. Oh, I think that's. Dale. How about how about everyone else who can take it somewhat seriously? <laughs> I heard simulation. Someone said simulation. Simulation, simulation of what? What? It's just <laughs> it's it's real real attack. Type some I heard Nessus. Nessus. <laughs> Nessus from the suit. Okay, Nessus from the suit. Yeah. Come on. A checklist item. Checklist item. Yes. So, part of PCI. Yes, I want to say that as well. Thank you, PCI. PCI. Uh, PCI. Are we allowed to use wall at some point? I, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear you guys. Finding weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Fine. Vulnerabilities. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Wow. wow. <laughs> Can somebody get her a mat or something? Yeah. Let's get her a mat or something else. <laughs> it's a life choice. Okay. Hey, this is what a bad test is? Cover the S strategy. A what? Sorry. Cover the S strategy. A strategy? Covering Cover the S. Yes. S covering yes. strategy. Yes. Just run it through S's <laughs> But it fits into the checklist. <laughs> when it is an S getting covered by something. <laughs> um, we still got half an hour. You, you keep going. No, no, no. I mean, come on. This is. This is this is what you think a pen test is. It's a verification of controls and if they are effective in the way they are put in place. Find that. Thank you. <laughs> that is awesome writing right there. Um, verification. That. Okay, anything else? Verification of controls. It's PCI. You find vulnerabilities. It's a checklist item. You use NASA's. And you use simulation of attack. Something. Yeah? This, this sums up pen testing. This is what pen testing is. Yes? This is time for everybody to be quiet and not talk. Yeah. Sir. Trying to think and do what an attack, what an attacker might do, okay. and see if it would work. <laughs> Try to emulate an attacker. I like that. So. Of all of you who have bought pen tests, which was a larger number than those of you who have done pen tests, how do you how do you get the person doing the pen test to tell you these things? What do you do? Like how do you how do you make sure that they can check list item or PCI or find vulnerabilities or verify the effectiveness of controls or simulate an attack or emulate an attacker? How do you do that? Like, what do you what do you use to validate that? Everyone's quiet. Confidence. Nothing. Yeah, just just, you just go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you for your piece of paper. That's it. First line. I yeah. want to work in Switzerland. <laughs> this is awesome. No, I mean, what do you what do you do? Uh, well, I personally know the people at the company that. Yeah. So you use the good old boy system. What else? What, 
What, what I need at do? least two, three things in to let them find by them. Like what? What are these two or three things? Don't play with me. I'm ready. Like, <laughs> what two or three things? What, what's your magic? Like, how do you, how do you magician pull this from the air? Like, oh, he's good. I just use my two or three things. No, just, just have a uh, mistake in the system and look if they find it. Find it at least that one. Find what? Oh, we fucks with them. He I mean, just vulnerability. He, he just points he just vulnerabilities. Come on, let's see what you got. Yeah. You don't do that. He just doesn't patch stuff, so. <laughs> you just go, oh, he's like, uh, did you get that? It's really it's depressing. It's really depressing if you have an outpatch system yeah. and it doesn't get owned. Yeah. I love this, by the way. We haven't done this. Like, this is awesome. Let's get down the back. Sir. Yeah. But I think his point is you, you should know your weaknesses or some of them even before you have a pen test being carried out. Okay. And if they're not even finding the weaknesses you know already or the risk you're accepting, then you know that something is amiss. So, so you're into the contract already? You've already signed something saying you're going to pay someone, and then you find out that they suck? Then you're not going to do a second contract with them. I think that's so you just, you just pay them the first time, and you're like, well, you sucked at this. Actually, that might not be true, because if you pass your PCI audit because of that scan, even if it wasn't helpful, you still pass your PCI. Ah. So you can pass with somebody who sucks. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably faster and easier than with someone who doesn't suck. Yes. <laughs> that comes in handy, doesn't it? Okay. That's <laughs> small. Okay. So let's write value. <laughs> and values over PCI. Next and time we'll that's get part of your validation model. And also part of your val validation model is friends. Which is a, another really, really good way to validate things. Just, just my friend is friend doesn't mean that you're a good pen tester. It doesn't? It's like, no, I consider it my friend. <laughs> <laughs> How else do you validate people? How else do you validate their skills? Let me certifications. Okay, cool. <coughs> what certs? CSSP. Let <laughs> <laughs> me. You're not wrong. I will see. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> what other What other certifications matter? I heard when someone's going to test your environment. I heard certified ethical hacker in the first line. Not so personally. You heard it from them, or you just made shit up? The kind of suit again. It doesn't matter. Anyone else? For some manager, it's enough if you have a master or a bachelor degree. Yeah? yeah. In what? <laughs> Pen testing? <laughs> Arts and crafts. Just a general IT master degree. Okay. Yeah, let's put that there. I'm just going to put the CEH, even though no one has actually said that except for him. <laughs> Are there any other things that you guys use? SANS? GX? Anything else? Okay. So, what, what I'm getting at, you see this list? Right. Simulate attack, Nessus, checklist item, PCI, find vulnerabilities. Verification of controls, emulate the hacker. And the way that you hire these people, which make a lot of money, by the way. I mean, like, they do, you do pay them money, which is important. The way that you validate these, like, random pirates that fly by your network and run these things, like Nessus, which you can do on your own, is cheaper. By knowing that they're your friends, which is just some mafia stuff, that's hilarious, right? By some piece of paper that they have, yeah, also awesome. And the fact that if they suck at it, you can pass PCI. This is this is what pen testing is. Doesn't isn't that confusing to people? Like, isn't that weird that we pay for that? 
That's, that's not like bad to anyone. Yeah? I mean, no, tell me, because I don't know, because I'm on the other side going, what the hell is this? That's what we have today. That's what we have today. Okay. Yeah, let's face it, imagine that you want a brand there. Imagine a ladder that says it's everything's okay with a big name on it, and they're happy, and they pay. That's not what fixes security, though. Yeah, of course not. Do you think Sony's happy? I'm pretty sure they got the ladder. That's how it works. They they, 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 they are happy. Yeah, but they have a new CISO. They report to the CIO. Hmm. I want more from you about that, though. Like what? <clears throat> so, as long as they're happy, right? Which is placating, right? Which is just, you know, okay, fine. As long as you're happy, we'll do this. Which I think is a really good point because. A lot of what happens in our industry around pen testing, around security testing, is just as long as you make someone else happy, which is kind of crazy if you're going to pay someone thousands of dollars to hack into something. I, I would hope that there's more of the whole value thing than there is pass us so that we could go do something else. So. So this is, I mean, we did pretty good. Let's see. PCI, well that's not on that slide, but checklist item, that's there. Find vulnerability, that's there. Verify controls, that's kind of there. I'll just give it a small little check mark. Emulate attacker, well, this is a good one because do you think your pen testers emulate attackers? No. No, they, they the only stuff emulate Nessus. pen testers. <laughs> right. So they, they, do you think attackers use Nessus? Do you think attackers are going to pay 1200 bucks for Nessus? <laughs> They're not going to do it. <laughs> so, so this doesn't really exist, but it sounds cool. Right? It sounds neat when you buy it. They're like, oh, I want you to emulate an attacker. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to emulate an attacker. Click. <laughs> and then they walk away, and then they come back, and they're like, five hours later, click PDF. <laughs> and they go, click send an email. Give me 10 grand. <laughs> right? That's, that, that, that's, that's their version of emulating an attacker. Nothing to do with attacks. Okay, so we got the check checklist. Oh, we got Nessus. That's one really scary. <laughs> Simulation of attack, which is just the same thing as that, which doesn't really exist. And then we got Dale's DP and the lifestyle, which those are just fun. <coughs> put a little face on it. Okay. So. So this is an actual model, right? Because we're really sick of the turtles raking shoes. We're sick of anybody in Price Waterhouse across the street? Hands, <laughs> so I can make fun of you? Anyone? Come on. Yeah. Higher, higher. Yeah. Big five in general. Big five, big four, big four. Please stand up, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, do you have a methodology that you follow? I start Tuesdays, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you can still talk shit on them when I get fired yet. I'll work on that. Um, anybody else have a, a, a model that they make people adhere to, or it's just, oh, well, my buddy does a pen test, or, oh, this checks the box for us? Quiet means yes. Sometimes the customer says, we want a pen test, and it has to be Austin, or it has to be this. Which, does, does Austin actually have anything about pen testing in it? I don't know, I've got one for you, no. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Oh. The rapture of I'm pretty sure it says the definition of black box and white box, and then goes no further at all. It's, it's white, double white, black, double black, gray, double gray. It just, it just like sounds like a, it sounds like a really bad party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a double black pill. Pen tester. 
So, so what, what we're trying to do with PTES is destroy this craziness because it's not repeatable, it's not trendable, it's not measurable. It's not measurable. And on the business side, this absolute craziness, right? We want people to have something to measure others by. Right? Because is this arbitrary mess doesn't work. It doesn't give you any value when you say, oh, just pass us because you suck. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't give you any value. I mean, it might be nice that day, but you don't pay to actually get an improvement in your environment. It's just blood money. Right? You're either just giving money to your friends, which is cool if <laughs> I'm one of your friends. Um, and if I'm not, you know, then I'm going to talk some back okay. because I wanted some money. But really, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not helping you in any way. You, you can't say, is pen tester A as good as pen tester B, can you? No. Like, how, do you, how would you do that today? Just based on how they hack you? <laughs> or like the, the, the way that they kick you down the stairs? Like this one did it with fervor and emotion, and then this one just kicked me down the stairs because it was funny. And then this one just kicked me down the stairs and missed, and they didn't hack anything. But you have, you have really no way to actually grade the pen tester, which is a really important feedback piece for those of you that are buying this type of stuff, right? Because what, what we need to be able to do is drive value in every dollar that you spend. And I know that that's horrible coming from some people who do pen tests and going, oh yeah, we want to actually provide you value instead of just take your money, right? But, but we need to try say, and do that. And I can say on the opposite side, I'm not a consultant. I run a security program for a Fortune 1000 company. And uh, we won't go with any company unless they're following P-Test, period. Because we know exactly what we're going to get when we go and do it. So now you need to spread that. I, absolutely. I, that, that's, that's yeah, here. <laughs> <laughs> I, just got done, I got done giving a presentation back in the United States yesterday specifically on what the P-Test was designed to do and, and what we're doing with it. And we're in a room full of business folks because they have no idea what they're looking at when it comes to a penetration test. You have CSOs and CISOs that have no idea what security means or what a penetration test means. And you have somebody coming up on stage as a CSO of a Fortune 1000 company and telling them you have to go buy this. You have to go buy the standard in order to have, have an effective pen test on your company. And this is why. And it's starting to take off. I mean, all the local companies where, where I'm from in the Ohio, Pennsylvania area are all starting to adopt pen test as a foundational method for how they do their statements of work and how they you know, engage in actual organizations. So, I mean, we're getting a lot of adoption rate for it. It's going to have to be because penetration testing is not what it was designed to be right now today. It's garbage. That's, it's, that's it's, it's, it's garbage. Wait, I mean, hold on. It's, <laughs> it's DP. It's <laughs> DP and yeah. it's a skin. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a up. That's dirty. You know, as most of you probably know, there aren't really that many pen testing companies here in Switzerland, right? I would say less than five. Does that sound right to most of you guys? And I think we're I know. I know. Yeah, it's it's like, I mean, <laughs> we got about 400,000 in the United States. States. To open like a Swiss office here. They're just cool and we'll work me for it. <laughs> so, um, as of my best knowledge, we're currently at nearly 50% adoption rate of the PTS in Switzerland. So, I think that's pretty kick ass. So. That's great. So, we had this problem in general with the industry, right? Which is this that not only do the pen testers not know what a pen test is, but the customers don't know what a pen test is yet. And people are forced to buy them, which is, in all conventional terms, crazy. Hey, Chris, I'm getting a signal from uh, Adrian that you should use this and like talk into it. You can use this. Yeah. <laughs> do you want it? You want, do you want it? No. Not <laughs> really. <laughs> can I hold this yours? Can I hold yours? Here, you do it. <laughs> 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 behind 
this store. <laughs> right here. Just use the mic and tell them what yeah, we're we're at. Say. Okay. Is that better? I don't know. Yeah, it's bad, but it's better for video. Hi, video. That <laughs> That's a really bad picture. <laughs> this is a crazy bad picture. But as you can see, there's a lot of shit on there. There's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so we've we've tried to actually make pen testing a static thing. Well, when you look at how it started, we all got together at Recon with like 50 of us, the pen testers from pretty much around the world, to get together and identify what we conceive as a penetration test and what we want to get out of it. And there was literally, we sat there for like four and a half hours bickering over. <laughs> I don't know what's behind me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got together and we, we basically came to consensus of an overall methodology around what we wanted to do as a penetration test and what we wanted to get out of it. And then from there, Chris started the mind map and we all pitched in and basically created what we wanted out of each step of a penetration test. And we've had people from all different types of, of experiences and, and people within business and people that have legal backgrounds, you know, uh, pitch in. So it's, it's kind of a comprehensive idea of how penetration tests should flow and how you should do it. But again, I mean, pen tests aren't a checklist. It's not like, hey, I have to do this, and I have to do this, and I have to do this. The hacker's not going to be like, okay, well, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. The right it, is, it's, <laughs> I have to go have range. It does, it, it's not an automated scanner. In fact, if you notice the methodologies, it says vulnerability analysis. It doesn't say vulnerability assessments or vulnerability scanning. There's, there's no scanning involved in this. There's, it's not like you run vulnerability scanners and then you run exploits on top of it. You actually have to do work. You have, you have to actually look at what you're doing, find exposures, exploit those, and then further penetrate the network. And I guess the, the point of a penetration test, at least to me, is to impact the business, to impact the organization. And it's supposed to be breach simulation. It's supposed to simulate what an attacker is actually gonna do. And so you, you, I guess you really have two types of things that can happen in your organization to see how you're doing in security. One is you just get owned and all your stuff's posted on the internet and, and it sucks horribly. Or two, you simulate a breach and you can actually see what an attacker can do and then from there you can actually start to fix your security program. And that's what Pentest was designed to do. This, it was designed to find your systemic flaws within your organization, what, what program maturity models you need to do in order to get to a heightened level of security and then from there enhance those. And a Nessus scan, has anybody here ever read through that entire report? Has someone here read through the entire Nessus report? We got one, two, three. Let me, let me ask you, let me raise your hand again. Has anybody read it all the way through without falling asleep. <laughs> all right, and then it went down. So those reports. On a, on a subnet. Not on a subnet. <laughs> You're right. You, you have a 500 page Seven report. 7,000 pages. And, and let me ask, has anybody fixed every single one of those vulnerabilities? Has anybody Did used that report for anything tangible? Did anyone see Chris's low to pwn talk? Yeah. How many of you fixed all the lows? And <laughs> doesn't exist. It's not possible. It's, but it's not what it was designed to do. It, you know, vulnerability scanners have their absolute play within an organization. They're great for vulnerability management. What systems you don't have in your patch management program, what systems aren't falling in with your standard of how you develop minimum security baselines, they're not designed for penetration tests. And, and reason being is you can't figure out how to impact the business through a scanner. It doesn't give you enough information. It's not a human. Oh, are you going? So hey. <laughs> <laughs> and but what I what I can say is when we do penetration tests, um, what we do, I mean we have we have a team internally dedicated to we're fortunate with ours, we have uh, six people specifically designed for penetration tests. And we do them quarterly in their full scope, so internal, external, wireless, physical, etc. But we also do weekly penetration tests on individual specific business units to see what risk we have towards an associated business. And why that's important is, if you look at how our organization actually generates revenue, and that's the only reason why we're here, by the way. The only reason why we're in security is to make sure that the company can still make money. That's it. No one else cares about security. Security doesn't make a difference, and it doesn't make any difference whatsoever in a company. But the only thing is, you're there to protect them, to keep, to let them keep making money. Break it or lose it. That's right. That's, that, those are really functionally in security, what you're trying to do is make sure it doesn't break and make sure you don't lose it. 
And, yeah. and, and vulnerability scanning, like Nessus, does neither of those. Like, it cannot accomplish that task in any way, shape, or form at all. All it does is give you a hypothetical connection to something that may or may not exist. That, that is, that, that is, that's freaking unicorns and butterflies, right? That, that's what Nessus is. I honestly can't tell you the last time that I ran a vulnerability scan on a penetration test. It's, okay. it's very, very rare for me too. Um, and what I can say to use vulnerability scans for, again, is our vulnerability management program. We have, you know, internally, we have uh, Rapid7 and Expo is deployed, and it scans our entire infrastructure, about 80-some thousand systems, so 87,000 systems, and it looks for systems that might be out of our patch management process. And that's the only thing we use it for, is to identify those. The rest is through the penetration testing aspects of it. So, you know, it's great for vulnerability management to go up to a board and say, hey, you know, here's our vulnerabilities two years ago, and here's the dip that goes down, and it looks pretty and great, but it does absolutely nothing when it comes to, you know, an attacker. Now, yeah, it will reduce your threat landscape when you're talking about actually patching systems and reducing, you know, exposures that you have, but you're really not going to get that detail of where your systemic problems are in your security program unless you do a penetration test. Like when I'm going through and I see, you know, hey, I'm doing a penetration test and I find uh, SQL injection. Well, I know there's a problem in my SDLC somewhere to where that exposure came through, where either that business unit wasn't involved or integrated into security, or we missed something in our team when we were doing the source code and dynamic testing of that application before it went into production. And we got to find where that was at in order to fix the actual problems going forward, because guess what? You know, if you fix that one SQL injection vulnerability, six months later you're going to have the exact same thing somewhere else. And it's that same thing. Um, how do you know what the impact is to your organization unless you trigger it? Yeah. Right? Like, use, your, use your GM example. I love that one. Which one? Is that where you're changing to Ford? Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I can't, I can't do that one. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but honestly, it's like, yeah, I do. I do. But, I, but I'm saying, like, how, how, do you, how do you know what really can happen? with any of the vulnerabilities that are in Nessus, whether it's low or high, or it's a microphone in your face, or not in your face. Right, how, how do you really know what the impact is? I mean, you just arbitrarily accept Ron Gula's ranking? Yeah, you're just high as high, low as low, please. So, um, I fully agree with this. Uh, yeah? Starters, I think it's great work. Um, I think generally there is an issue within the industry and in that there is a perception of what a pen test is and what a vulnerability sure. scan is. That's yes. a problem. Yeah. But we also have a problem on the customer side where they say, we want a pen test, the scope is the following. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And guess what? Totally. And, it's, and that's where it's, it's up to us to start changing that. That's why when I go with pen testing companies, I get the 10 grand pen test that say, hey, we're going to run a vulnerability scan and exploit. And then I get the 20 grand one that might be a little bit more, but actually shows what they're going to outline and do. I'm only going to go with that company. And I'm in a position in my company to be able to do that. I run the security program. I'm going to spend an extra 10 grand to get something that's going to be worth value versus something I can just throw away in the trash and burn. Fully and, agree. But how do you get the organizations to switch from a mindset of yeah. uh, this is cost versus what we get to this is the perceived value that we'll get? You know, Adoption. How get them, yeah, how do you get Adoption them gets that. Okay. I mean, I mean, you can. Well, I, I, I just, I'm rhetorical about it, right? So, like, I'm asking you the same question. How do you, like, what do you need in order to get more value? Is it some bunch of seventy jerks from all around the world to like put together a big giant document and then give that document to management and go, hey, this is what we need, or like what? What, what would drive that for you? Because I think that's, at the end of the day, we're trying to drive progress. And, if, and if, sure. if we're not driving it, we need to know how to drive it. So how do you get, how do you get the right support to get value out of it instead of this crazy Vanessa's do check mark stuff? I think, um, I think there are two areas, and, it's, and, and I'm taking sides of it because I'm, uh, you know, I'm not on a customer. Good. I don't have a customer perspective. Um, from a customer perspective, they're really going and saying, okay, you've done this pen test. Mm -hmm. What is our business impact? And you go like, well, dude, we don't understand your business. You know, mm -hmm. So if you want an impact analysis, 
there we go. Yeah. And then they go like, well, we'll do the impact analysis afterwards. And then they come out with something that says, you know, complete bullshit. And I think that is where the gap is, is the, the people doing the penetration test should not only understand the technology, yes. but they should also really understand the business that they're working in. If it's a finance business, you know that. what you're dealing with. A, a, penetra a penetration test should have business impact in it. I mean, that comes, that comes out of the pre-engagement interactions of how you're scoping the engagement and how the actual organization runs. It comes out of your intelligence phase of how you're actually looking at how the organization generates revenue. And it comes out of your threat modeling where you're actually determining where you want to target the organization and where you want to impact them the most. Not, not just what shells to get. Right. Domain, domain anatomy means nothing anymore. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's fun for us hackers when we get it. We're like, you know, yeah, you know, but it means absolutely nothing when it's compared to the business. Absolutely, but within the business, you also have this gap between somebody that wants the pen test and sort of understands what it is, sure. and somebody, and somebody wants that wants to know what the yeah. yeah. and it's, but, but let's let's look at let's look at the maturity model of OWASP because I think OWASP is a good reference point to how we got injected into PCI. OWASP came from no nothing. You know, it started off as a as a small foundation where they did absolutely nothing when it came to application security, and it kind of matured and grew, and PCI then included that in in the PCI standard. Now, I'm not trying to say compliance is in any way, shape, or form um, a way to build a security program, but right now in PCI, all it specifically states is you have to have a penetration test done by a reputable company. It has absolutely no foundation or teeth to it. You know, companies start adopting this, and that might, it, yeah, it, it means absolutely nothing. It's like they, they make up a magic word yeah. and they don't define that magic word. Like, like no one, Really defines no one. Testing. No one has defined pen testing. Yeah. Do you really want PCI to define good pen testing? No, no, no. What, 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 <laughs> no. What I can say is, if PCI if puts p test in there, <laughs> it would be nice to at least define what a penetration test step should be. Now, I'm not listen. I, and, I, and I precap out of that with compliance in no way, shape, or form should ever drive a security program. Period. You build security from the foundation and compliance happens to fall into it. I mean, you might have to make some minor modifications. Like I had to write a policy for a policy to comply with PCI. <laughs> I have never, never heard of that before, but I had to do a policy for a policy. So, but the rest of the stuff fell right in line with what I was trying to do. I already had proper segmentation and blah, 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 because I built my security from the foundation, uh, from a foundational perspective. So the way that you get adoption with this, at least in my opinion, is you. You use it. You know, for those that are in companies and your decision, you know, you're at the table, guys, and you're like, well, hey, here's your standard PCI report, you know, PCI pen test. Well, this sucks. This is the reason why we should do this. And here's the things that we should be asking because, you know what, a lot of people don't know what a pen, why am I pointing with a small spoon? I got kind of passionate with the small spoon. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, but it, it, it's going to take you to define, and it's going to take people that don't understand pen tests. Like when I said in that in the presentation yesterday, I was in a room full of very non-technical folks that had really no idea what a pen test was, and I went up there and I explained it to them and why we're doing it, the reasons the reasons why they should do it, and everybody's shaking their head and nodding and writing it down. That's all it takes is to get people to understand what a pen test should be, and this walks you through of what you should expect. It goes through, you know, pre-engagement interactions of how you should scope the engagement, what trophies you should go after, what you know, business intelligence you should be looking at, you know, the threat modeling right, the reporting. We just seen reporting. I mean, all of that is is included into p-test to define it. And that's, that's that's really what I feel like you were getting at is a lot of times pen tests come out poorly because no one has a level of expectation. Right? No, one, no one's expecting a certain type of results. They're just waiting to see what the unicorn brings them. Now, you have to remember that this is not a checklist. Okay? So this is not going to save your ass from doing work. This is a framework. It's a methodology. It explains what you should expect as a customer and what, you should, and what you're expected to do as a pen tester. Now, we're, we're kind of short on time, so we're, we're going to fly through a couple of things. Um, we are basically done writing the basic standard. stuff, all right? So the basic standard uh, and, and guidelines. We'll get to the guidelines it's in a second. Actually, it's, it's actually, actually online. Today, it's, it has been a full year. Yeah. Today. Okay. Like, actually, today, <laughs> from the day of the year, it has been one full year. Someone buy us a birthday cake. <laughs> 
It's online, it's available for free. Uh, all the sections are published. Uh, and right now, we're looking for two things. One is feedback, because we've been pulling stuff out of our asses for a year now, and we need to make sure that it actually resonates well within companies and testers. One thing, one thing to say with that, though, is everybody has their own individual experience they have in the industry. We rely off of everybody to do that, everybody. So whether it's the most junior of a pen tester to you know, someone that's a senior pen tester or someone that has a legal background, we rely off of everybody to help. It's, it's free, it's open, everybody's contributing. I think we have over like 120 people that have been contributing to it. And that's what we're looking for. We need everybody's experience to continue to pull through because I don't, I don't know everything. You know, you know, Chris doesn't know everything. Stefan might know everything, but you know. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> kind of, it kind of degrades it a little bit, but. <laughs> But, but the point, point yeah. being in some of that is that even if you're not Mrs. or Mr. Hacker, we, we have to have your opinion. Right? And it can come in, in different person, shapes and forms. Yeah, if you're, if you're the person who needs to get a pen test, you should be one of the people writing this thing because you're going to get more value. The more that you write, the more value you're going to get. If you're right. technical and you know a certain section and you're skilled at it and you think you can contribute uh, less to the standard but more to the practice, we've got you covered. We've got the Pentas <coughs> standard uh, guide, basically, which correlates with the standard itself. And as I mentioned before, the standard doesn't say do A, B, C, right? It's not a checklist. The guide, on the other hand, says, all right, so when you do this section, here are a few tools and techniques and whatever it is that you can that you can use. And the guide is pretty awesome. I mean, if, if you guys have ever bought like a intro to hacking or pen testing book, you just wasted your money because this thing is probably the best book on pen testing that I've ever seen. It, it's yeah, there's, there's nothing close. Really, really thorough. And it goes down to the level of, all right, so this is how you compile this tool because it's only available like via source code. And this is the libraries that you need to use because they're missing or something like that. And, and it's just awesome. So Here's the way it breaks. You can, again, use this. You can contribute to it. We'd love it. Now, on top of that, and this is new from an hour ago, yeah. No, I'm, I'm into this now. I'm watching your talk. It's we've cool. we've <laughs> published, we took the entire standard, uh, the different sections. This is from now. It's, oh, it's like, a, this is what I was doing in back. This is, oh, okay. <laughs> this is me and you watching the talk. Exactly. <laughs> we basically took the entire standard, put it in one PDF file, <laughs> and the link to the online version is on. Oh, the link to the online version is online. We'll All right. The link to the online version it's, is online. It's on pentastandard.org. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just watch me. Dave makes the craziest that... passwords in the world. Oh. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. Like, I have to use the, like, remember my password thing. Okay. I needed to expand my email quota just to get the emails. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're crazy. It's not that quota, but, like, that's 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 security that's around is my, my oh, job, so it hasn't yeah. been nailed yet, so. Bring it on. So what? this, what? <laughs> this is basically a link to the guide that you can comment on. So you can take the guide, all right, take the standard, sorry, go to a specific section and just put a comment that says, you're full of shit, this is not the way to do it, here's how I think it should be done. And everyone can do that, everyone can collaborate and, and put their comments on there and actually do something about it. Actually when Ian said bring it on, we meant to attack pentastandard.org yeah. because it will hold up. Please do not attack acrobat.com <laughs> from the hashtags <laughs> network. Please, Thank you. Please attack acrobat.com and not the <laughs> standard. <laughs> because I kind of keep our stuff and I don't care about the topic. <laughs> well, good news, cool. good news is that's so backed up once a day. So. <laughs> okay. okay, you guys just break whatever you want. I don't care. So, so where, I mean, I, I know this is kind of tongue in cheek, right? But, but does something like this help? Don't, don't wave your little, little thing at me. 
No, but d does, does it help or is it just stupid for us to talk about it? Definitely not. We don't care. No, it definitely not. Yeah. But I mean, I, and I... I guess it helps the more you have talks about it. Thank you. We try. Oh, come to my talk at two o'clock, by the way. Yeah. I have a talk after that. <laughs> We're all talking about it. But I don't. I don't think it does. I don't think. I mean, like, what? What are we gonna do with all this crap that we wrote? The talking about it is okay. I think the doing. Um, that's where the magic lies. Okay. It's actually getting people to adopt it and actually because the thing is, looking at get people stuff, to do it. So That's the confusing part to me, is we have a room full of people that are silent. How do we give people to actually do something meaningful? I think there are two things. The one thing is raising um, sort of the expectation also from a customer perspective as to okay. what, you know, what if you Google for pen test or pen test standard or pen test whatever, yeah, this is going to come up, you know? <laughs> We're getting close. I'm working on this. Yeah, maybe if you Google images, it might be a bit bad. But, um, yeah, so, so the one thing is actually just getting uh, information to the customer. Um, the other thing is actually just getting awareness within the industry as well. That, you know, and I think maybe it's not going to be something that happens from one day to the next, but at least there's something for people to start working with. Well, what, I, what I can say is I've seen a large adoption of it starting to happen. It just takes time. I mean, the, the biggest thing that was holding us back was having an actual standard on it. You know, to, to see what they're doing. The Pete Dash G came out first. We hate writing. We hate writing so much. Hey. It's so bad. <laughs> like, I remember I got like halfway through, you know, and, and, you know, I got halfway through like the exploitation part of it, and then like I just dropped it because I got so bored and I fell asleep. And so then I, then I wrote the rest of it on the plane on the way to DerbyCon. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, he's, that's right. Um, but, you know, but we have the people to do it. I mean, you know, we have the guys in the industry that are willing to put their skin in it, the, the reputation, you know, what they've done. I mean, we have guys like H.D. Moore and, you know, uh, Chris and these guys and Carlos from, you know, uh, uh, from... It's from Tenable. It's from Tenable. Um, you know, but we have a lot of the guys that you would know in the industry that they want to change it. They know they need to change it. And you have companies out there that are just selling these. And we know what's wrong. We know it's not doing any good. And it will change. It just takes you guys to do it. And that's what that's why I was put back to audience. It's you guys that make it happen. It's not us. I mean, I, I my company, we will only go with a company that does P test. Period. And they have to put that in the statement of work and we have to, you know, go through the pre engagement interactions and see how they're gonna scope it and take the level of knowledge that the, the, the team that they have assigned to us is. And you know what? They're not gonna be able to set their their most junior person on that anymore. They're gonna actually have to have somebody that can actually do a penetration test. I mean we had one last year where a poor kid actually was on site and he was calling a guy on the phone on how to run tools. I mean, I mean but that's, that's what we get. That's what we get. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's what we've made penetration testing today. So my, my thing to you guys would be is, you make it happen. We'll do our job. So we are out of time, unfortunately, uh, and in desperate need, so I need of drinks, I guess. So um, if you've got questions, I think that whole thing was just a big Q&A in some way, so you should be fine. But just come up to us, talk to us. If you're interested in contributing, just get on the side, give us feedback. Thanks for listening and have a great day.